Today, I'm really, really excited. Oh my God! This is potentially one of the best indoor pizza ovens in the world. Look at this, look at this, see? The pizza going in like that, nice pizza. Watch this. How good does that look? Oh my gosh, and you know, look at that stone. You know it's been used a lot because that stone is proper charred. I really hope it's the same one. It looks very, very similar. It's called the Napoli Pizza Express. It's had some incredible reviews. It came from Italy and it was continually out of stock, but I finally got one. Now, I love pizza, as you know. We actually experimented once with this really weird indoor one with like a dome, and that was, to be fair, pretty uh, terrible because it didn't get hot enough. My oven's got a pizza setting on it where it goes up to 280C, so really, really hot for it, and it always sets off my smoke alarm. I've also shown you the method where you can actually do it on the hob, first of all, and then put it under the grill or broiler. That's another way, but you're really not getting that heat into it. Ideally, a wood-fired oven. Yeah, one like this. Yep, that is an actual wood-fired oven in my garage. You can get up to 500 degrees. It's all about that heat. Now this thing, see that there? In eight minutes, it can warm itself up to 450C. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way. I've paid for this, but that is 170 degrees more than my pizza oven there, which does an okay job. Oh wow, that is insanely heavy. Pizza, you can do naan breads in it, calzone, even tarts. And yes, if this is your first rodeo with me doing videos like this, we will not just do pizza in it, of course. These are possibly the most intense instructions I have ever read in my life. In fact, I've picked out some pointers. Between baking one pizza and the next, we recommend leaving the oven lid open for about two minutes. Rules in force. Making sure that the capacity absorption limit marked on the simple adapters and the extensions and the maximum power limit marked on the multiple adapters are not exceeded. What the hell does that mean? That does not make any sense to me. Make sure the appliance is used on a surface resistant to heat. Do not use it on a flammable surface like plastic, wood, cardboard or glass. Okay, we'll get around that. Do not use the appliance near explosives, highly flammable materials, gases or burning flames. Now, my hob is gas. As a security measure, I've turned off my gas meter and drained all of the gas out of that. That might be overkill, but I've never really seen that before. Oh, this was a funny one. Do not hold the appliance with wet hands or feet. <laughs> Of course, I, I love carrying appliances with my feet. It's brilliant, especially after I've had a bath. Someone did tell me once there's normally like a warning message because there's a story behind it and I'm so intrigued for that story. Oversized foods or metal utensils must not be inserted in the oven as they may create a fire or risk electric shock. That's pretty darn scary. And the last one, in bold, keep these instructions. That I've re that is what scared me. This really reiterated a lot of things today. As you know, I don't normally read the instructions. So basically it's saying it'll cook any kind of pizza within about four to five minutes, either uh, from the freezer, which we'll do, or fresh dough, which actually uh, earlier I made some dough. In fact, this was yesterday. I got some uh, water and yeast and sugar, just mixed it around for a couple of minutes, added the bread flour, chucked in the salt, mixed it all together, gave it a good old knead, added cling film on top uh, and let it rest. In fact, that's actually been in the fridge overnight to really develop those flavors. That's optional. And just for like the fresh pizza we're gonna try and do. Now this is probably a bit overkill, but I'm, I really don't feel like setting my house on fire today. So it's now not on wood. My gas is completely off. We're in a good place. Honestly, I am so excited about this. I know there's ones by well-known brands that are both outdoors with wood and indeed indoor electrical too. Maybe I'll look at those too, but something about this just really stood out for me. Okay, so I've got a frozen pizza here, barbecue chicken. Actually, barbecue chicken it is. If I ever had to have a pizza, barbecue chicken, absolutely love it. Ooh, anything come on? No, that's good, it's on zero. Spinal tap style, we're taking this baby to two and a half. So I've got a little area to put my pizza. It's, actually I think I might have gone a bit overkill, which is quite rare for me. I've uh, changed into a jumper to protect my arms a little bit just in case, uh, and I've got some oven gloves as it says. So I can hold it by that and lift it up. Oh my gosh. <sighs> How's your aim? Get that down. Close the lid. Oh, that's it. Right, four minutes and we'll see what we've got. But we're like 90 seconds in and there's like a real fresh smell of like baked dough and a little bit of caramelization scent in the air which could very quickly turn to burn. 
Okay, we've got about 30 seconds left till it hits four minutes. It said four to five, but I'm too excited. And what are we looking for? We're not looking for that sort of light or maybe slightly golden char that you get from an oven. I want it more than that. All right, here we go. It's actually more awkward with this. I'm, do you know what? I'm gonna, I think we can do it. I've got my other glove here. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Particularly around the sides there. Look, it's almost where it's closer to the end there where the heating element, do not touch that heating element, Barry. Yeah, look at that color. That's amazing. If we rotate that to try and get this slightly less cooked side there, back down that goes. That is seriously impressive. I'm just a little bit gutted that I had to rotate it. The only thing I've got to confess is it said to take it to two and a half on the heat right. If there's the option to drive more heat into it and go to the max, I'm gonna do it. And that's what I did. So, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't. Whoa, <gasps> I might have pushed that a bit too much. Yeah, just look at that. You would not achieve that in a standard oven. Oh, look at the crust as well. Mm. Oh, wow. Even bubbled up in some places. I have to say, remember, this is a frozen pizza. That is a phenomenal start. This looks really different when you cook it in the oven. You mean that or the fact that I've got a porcelain slab in the house? Both. I thought it looked, visually it looked amazing. Mm. Tastes good. Yes. I'm not in your bad books now. Sorry about the gas being off as well. I do think that might have been overkill. So there's loads of recipes in the instructions that I could do, but I made that fresh dough earlier. Let's do a fresh pizza. Today isn't really about pizza sauce and the toppings. It's all about this machine really. So I'm just I've got my dough that I've made. I'm just shaping it a little bit. The fact that we know this isn't gonna take long to prep the pizza, we might as well get it warming back up. So it's, got, it's not even gonna take me 10 minutes to make this, but hey ho. So some pizza sauce. Now this is a mozzarella ball. We could just tear it on. I've got some pepperoni here, but what I actually kind of want is the mozzarella to weigh it down. So I'm actually lifting some pieces up and I'm gonna be proper confident now. I've not turned my gas back on, but no oven gloves at all. Ugh. Take this, straight down on there, boom. Ah, here we go. Whilst that is cooking away, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you are, make sure all your notifications are turned on. I upload regularly each week. And if you'd like to consider supporting the channel on Patreon, I've got early access videos, extended videos no one else will ever see, names at the end of the videos, behind the scenes, Discord channel, loads of cool stuff like that and giveaways. Uh, but this thing, I am actually gonna give away to one Patreon. Although I would normally sign this and give it away, I'm actually gonna get a brand new one and send it direct to one of you. Yep, I'm that impressed with it already that I'm gonna get one for one of you guys. And if you're a non-patron, you can have a chance too. Anyone that signs up to my top tier patron by the end of the 31st of January, 2024, I'll put your name into a raffle where I will buy you and send to your house, wherever you are in the world, one of these machines. So yeah, it won't be this one, it'll be a brand new one that I'll buy myself. Any new patrons on my top tier will go into the raffle. Oh my gosh, yes. Some basil on there and a shimmy of olive oil. That has worked out amazing. I love that deep blistered charring of it. I got to show the base, hang on, let's have a look. Ah, yes, ow, 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 ow. That's really, really hot. Mate, that is 1200 watts of electric pizza goodness. Yeah, oh yes. That's amazing. Yeah? I have just burnt the roof of my mouth. <laughs> That's so like crunchy. Oh, I know what you mean. That is insanely hot, but that just shows how hot that got. Can't taste anything now. <laughs> but I was thinking, obviously I've turned it up to the max. What you could do is do it to two and a half just to warm the stone, get the dough down and then crank it so the heating element cooks the top faster. So you've got a bit more control with the base, but as it is, I'm really happy with that. That's not too bad at all. And nothing rose up. So, so nice. Like the frozen pizza was fine, but this just takes it up a notch. That dough mm. and the fresh mozzarella really helps. Just made Chloe a dairy free cheesy one. Oh, look at that. Look at the state of that. Oh my gosh. Mmm, that's heaven. You're good? Mmm, thank you. I think that's the best I've ever seen that dairy free cheese melt, to be fair. Mm. Actually looks like cheese rather than plastic. So I wanna have some fun with it now. With it being effectively an oven, we can cook pretty much anything in it. So one of the things it suggests in the manual is fish. And no pun intended, on the hunger scale, I could do with some fish. 
Well, I've actually had enough of cod. This is haddock, but it's just one of those foil trays that you buy with uh, a buttery sauce on it. So normally you would place this in an oven for 25 minutes-ish, around about 200 C. See, this is double the heat. And I'm getting confident with it now. And the only thing I'm worried about is, is it gonna touch that heating element? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Damn. Be right back. It's kind of like my uh, my Christmas wrapping, folks. Let's see if that will help. Come on, baby. Yes! Fish supper tonight. Oh, I forgot to turn it on. All right, let's see what that does in a minute. Folks, I've applied the sexy lens to show you the buttery fish. Oh my gosh. Look at that bubbling away. That is gorgeous. Absolutely incredible. And that's been six minutes. So we shaved nearly 20 minutes off the cooking time. It's just a very, very hot machine. Ooh, okay, cool. Amazing. Cooked all the way through, not just hot on the top, perfectly charred and crunchy. That has worked to charm. Now there's one other thing I wanna try today, and that's it, our old friend, Kreti Bokka Mix. Uh, so we have got some peanut butter brownie mix here. If you look behind, there's a bowl there with the batter already made up, but we swirl the peanut butter in and I bought this foil roasting tray. You know, the sort that people will probably put their turkey in Christmas dinner, something very, very big. Uh, so we've already learned how high we need to make this. <laughs> Let's try and manipulate this a bit and then pour our batter in. Because if that works, we're gonna have indoor pizza oven peanut butter brownies. Wow. I could just use tin foil. So I'm gonna just push this batter down. Wow, that is thick. But we don't know how much that's gonna rise. So we'll keep adding more. <laughs> and now we swirl it with the peanut butter. So this would normally bake for 22 minutes at 180 C. So based on the fish with that temperature, this could only take around six to seven minutes. Um, oh gosh, I can smell burning. Oh my gosh! It's, 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 um, charred. I mean, if we were doing like wood-fired brownies as well, it would probably look like that on the top. I'll have to see if they're cooked first. The good news is, as this cools down, the pizza stone's still got a lot of heat in it, so it's still technically cooking it from the bottom, which is probably the most important part. But these are actually quite thin brownies. It's risen up, so that might be all right. Do you want to try some brownie? No, it's a bit I would like to call it charred. That is actually cooked through. <laughs> that is really, really nice. That first top layer that's charred there, just it's almost giving it like a tiny thin skin of like deep smoky flavor that's gone in with the peanut butter and the sweetness and giving it like a real, almost like a wood fire taste. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it smells like we're around a campfire in here right now and it tastes like it too. Mm. That tastes a lot better than it looks. Well, there we go. This really does get my seal of approval. Thank you to the names on the screen right now that support the channel on Patreon, as I say. And if you want to sign up to be in for getting a brand new one of these so you can do charred brownies yourself. But that pizza was phenomenal. Check it out. See you soon. Bye-bye.